In this lecture we will do a problem 13.33 which is related to spur gear force analysis. This is the diagram for this problem where we have different gears meshed with each other. Gear 2 is pinion gear mounted on shaft A. Gear 2 is meshed with gear 3 which is mounted on shaft B and we have gear 4 mounted on shaft B as well. This is gear 4 mounted on shaft B. Gear 5 is mounted on shaft C and this gear 5 is meshed with gear 4. We have 18 teeth on pinion or gear 2, 32 teeth on gear 3 and 18 teeth on gear 4, 48 teeth on gear 5. This is y axis and this is x axis and the problem we are given that module for all these gears is 12 millimeter and the pressure angle is 20 degree. Gear 2 or shaft A is rotating with 1800 rpm in clockwise direction like this. Because of the rotation it will transmit power to gear 3 which will in turn transmit it to shaft B and shaft B. Upon the shaft B we have gear 4 so power will be transmitted to gear 4 which will in turn transmit that power to gear 5 and that transmitted power is 150 kilowatt. Gear 3 and gear 4 are idler gears consuming no power so all the power coming from shaft A through the gear 2 then to gear 3 which in turn to gear 4 will totally be transmitted to gear 5. Or shaft C. Now what we will have to find is the force on shaft B because of gear 3 and gear 4. Shaft B is in and out of the page so let's draw that shaft. Let this is gear 3 and this one is gear 4 mounted like this. Gear 2 exerting force on gear 3 in tangential direction like this and in radial direction like this and let's draw it over here as well so this is the force exerted by gear 2 on gear 3 in radial direction and this one is in tangential direction f 2 3 t this is the z axis and this is y axis and this is x axis so the tangential force is in x direction Gear 5 will exert force on gear 4 like this along the pressure line. The rotation of the gears will be like gear 2 in clockwise direction, gear 3 and gear 4 in anti-clockwise direction and gear 5 will rotate in clockwise direction again. So this is F54, this is its tangential component and this is its radial component F54R. So replicate these forces in our own free body diagram as well. Remember since these are the rectangular components so ang angles here will be 90 degree. Since we have to find the forces on the idler shaft B because of the gear 3 and gear 4 and these forces were on the gears not on the shaft but as these gears are mounted on the shaft so these forces will be replicated or exerted on the shaft B because of the gear 3 and gear 4. So force on the shaft B because of the tangential component of F4-5 will be in negative x direction similarly because of its radial component the force on shaft B will be in negative y axis direction. Similarly, force on shaft B because of the radial component of force F23 will be in positive y direction. And force on the shaft B because of the tangential component of F23 will be in positive x direction. So, if we find the rectangular components of the forces on gear 3 and gear 4, we can easily find out their respective forces on the shaft B. So we will start our analysis with finding the force 
exerted by the pinion on gear 3 in tangential direction but for that we will need the diameter as well so let's find out the diameter first these are the given data as in our previous lectures we have discussed the formula for page diameter that is equal to module and to number of teeth on that gear so if we multiply n2 with m we will get diameter of gear 2 and similarly multiplying n3 with m that is 12 we will get d3 and multiplying n4 with m we will get d4 similarly for d5 so d2 equals to 18 into 12 that is equal to 216 millimeter d4 is also equals to 216 millimeter d3 is equal to 384 millimeter d5 equals to 576 millimeter now let's have free bird diagram of gear 2 these are the axis means x and y axis this is shaft a and upon shaft a gear 2 is mounted like this gear 2 and gear 3 are meshed with each other like this when gear 2 rotating in clockwise direction gear 3 will exert a tangential force like this on gear 2 and radial force like this tangential component represented by wt and radial component is represented by wr and this will be the torque exerted by shaft a on gear 2 ta or ta2 we know that power here is represented by h and it is equal to f into v f is the force through which the power is transmitted so here in this case it is wt and v is equal to pi dn rearrange the formula for wt sometime power is given in the form of kilowatt so instead of kilo we will write 10 raised to the power 3 and n and un n and unit rpm so instead of minute write or divide it by 60 which will go up to the nominator and multiplied with 1000 we will get 60,000 and to h divided by pi dn put h equals to 150 and n equals to 1800 since the calculation is for pinion so we will put the diameter of the pinion d2 that is 216 millimeter so instead of midi write 10 raised to the power minus 3 which will go up to the nominator and we can write it in the form of kilo so kilo and this answer will be appeared w t equals to 7.368 kilo newton now let's find out the torque exerted by the shaft a on gear 2 that is t a2 as we know that that torque is equal to force into radius force here as w t and radius as d2 by 2 since we have the values of w t and d2 so putting the values we will get 795.7 newton meter the unit for wt was kilo newton and for diameter it was millimeter so kilo and milli will get cancelled with each other so this is the value of tier 2 now let's find out the radial comp as we know that force because of the gear 3 on gear 2 will be uh, along the line of action like this it will make an angle pi or pressure angle with the tangential component so wt as the base and wr as the perpendicular component and as we know that tangent pi is equal to perpendicular by base so it is equal to wr divided by wt rearranging it for wr which is equal to wt and to tangent of pi putting wt equals to 7.36 at and to tangent of 20 we will get 2.6 at 2 kilo newton now we can easily find forces on gear 3 and gear 4 because forces on gear 3 will be just opposite in direction to the forces on gear 2 for that first draw free body diagram of gear 3 and gear 4 these are the x and y axis this is the shaft b this is gear 3 this is the tangential component which is wt or f23t 
now draw its radial component which is WR or F23R now gear 4 is also mounted on the same shaft since it is meshed with gear 5 like this so this is how those forces will be exerted we have finded out the values of these two forces to find the other two let's draw shaft B again and the gears on it as both of them are mounted on the same shaft so torque in both of them will be equal to each other so T3 equals to T4 T3 is because of the force WT or F23T and to R3 or D3 by, by 2 that is equal to F5 or T and to D4 by 2 to cancel out each other and divide D4 on both sides we will get F54T equals to WT and to D3 by D4 this is R4 or D4 by 2 in our previous formula we have divided it on both this is radius R3 and this is WT here we have represented both F23T and F54T as WT but actually they are different so instead of writing WT for F54T you should write something else because you will not gain, get confused then so after the calculation we will F54T equals to 13.1 kN so its radial component will be equals to its tangential component and to tangent of pressure angle 20 as the tangential component was 13.1 so multiply it with tangent 20 we will get WR equals to in fact not WR but F54R radial component of the force exerted by gear 5 on gear 4 4.76 head so we have calculated all these forces these forces were on the gears and they will be transmitted to the shaft so let's draw it once again let's draw the shaft this is the shaft in y axis this is the x axis and this is the z axis let's let this is the point where gear 3 is mounted so tangential force on the shaft will be in the positive x direction and in radial direction it will be in zx these forces will be f3b x and f3b z that this is the point 4 where gear 4 is mounted so this will this will be f4b in negative x direction and f4b in negative z direction instead of x and y and z i have written them in the form of t or r just to show you that how they are related with the previous forces on the gear so f4bt or f4bx is equal to 13.1 kN f4bz is equal to 4.768 kN f3bx equals to wt which is 7.368 f3br or f3bz is equal to f23r which is 2.682 kilonewton.